How's it going guys and welcome back for a different video. Today's video is going to be about how you can build your own fusion cannon. A lot of you guys have messaged me that you would like for me to explain how you can build your own cannon. Now it's not really that easy because as you see it's all about practice. It's all about building cannons and figure out what's working and what's not working. But what I can do though is actually showing you guys tips and tricks. So today's video is going all about tips and tricks and explaining a little bit about how it works. Now what you're looking at right here is a booster. Now the booster's uh, entire job is to boost everything over to one block. As you can see over here, we can quickly go ahead and show you guys how we can boost everything over to one block by simply go ahead and add this. And this one right here, well, if I TNT fill it, would boost everything over to one block. Now this right here is really important, this part right here, because it, you need everything to be as close to the shot as possible. That's also what you see in fusions nowadays, parallel fusion, efficient fusions, is that everything is within one block of the power. Now this right here is a, a 3x booster and we can use this to boost it really far. Now the only problem and the only limitation is pretty much how redstone signal works. Now you, it can only travel an X amount of blocks. So as you can see over here, we have a sign and you can see that it stops at 15. So at 16, there's no signal. So that means that you can only make your power 15 or 16 if you use the last block as the detection block, which you actually can. But in this case right here, 15 is the max as you can see right here. Now that's not entirely true. You could go ahead and wire this up really weird and set it right here. But that's not really what we want to do. Now keep in mind that if you have this like this, you won't be able to fit in a rear liner. That's why I almost always use 13 unless I'm playing on a server where East and West is fixed. So it's very important that you use this time right here to think about how long you want your sank or sorry, your power to be. 13 is pretty much a perfect size right here as you can see. You can have the rear liner and everything. So once we are starting to build our boosters and start to build our powers, we need to think about how we're gonna set up all this hammer, sand and pistons. Now the way we can do that is pretty much not a method we can do. It's a method that you have to learn. It's a method that you have to explore. This right here is the way I used to make mine. I'm pretty sure I was the one that made this first as well, where you can put everything into one block away from the power, which allows us to shoot extremely far. So we have the power, sorry, the hammer coming in right here, we have the sand coming in right here, and the red sand will be shot in from the side. So this is only one method. There's so many methods where you shoot it in using TNT where you go ahead and make the pistons extremely close to each other, where you can go ahead and make it shoot everything up. So this right here will be the hammer, shoot it all the way up and land right there. There's also methods where you can shoot it in from the side, where the hammer will be on the side. So there is so many methods and that's what makes factions so fun, that there's so many methods you can do it and you just got to find your own way, dude. Like you got to just feel it and then just kind of just do it and test it out. This right here is a pretty much a standard layout for a cannon. As you can see right here, we have the hammer on top and we have the power at the back. Now the reason for this setup right here is actually pretty simple. To make a hammer work, you need to have it maximum 3 ticks after the power. Because if you have it more than 3 ticks, the shot will dip too much and it won't really stack the high you want. So it's very important that you put the hammer semi-close to the uh, power unless you can get a signal from somewhere else that I do in some of my cannons. Now on top of that, we also know that a piece of TNT blows up after 10 full repeaters, which is pretty easy to add this right here. So here we have 10 full repeaters going into these pistons. Keep in mind that these two right here is added due to our second power right here that I'm going to come into in a second. So as everything takes shapes, it's going to look a little bit like this. And this is pretty much what you just gotta build, man. You just gotta have like get a feeling for it and just start building cannons. And that's pretty much the only lesson I can give you is that you can take my tips and tricks right here. But at the end of the day, it's you that has to build a cannon to get it to work. Now that we talked so much about cannons, now what about sand compressions? Sand compressions is also a big thing right here. We do need to find just the right sand compression for you. Now there is various. Uh, methods of doing sand compressions. This right here is a one push where we use sand to pretty much just go ahead and push sand out in one scoop. You can see that if I do something like this. Now this right here is 
actually pretty smart and this is what most cannons uses at the moment this is one push right here which just makes the life a lot easier now there is a method where you can push a lot of sand out but it's going to take a while so this one right here is without a quick pulse and the quick pulse is something where it cuts the signal in half but still is a signal and you can see that over here now this right here would go a lot faster and that's what a quick pulse is you are most likely going to use this in uh, in cannon building but as of right now just don't really worry about it but yeah this right here is one method there's also another method where you use the glass instead this right here will also push everything out in one block so as you can see there is so many methods of sand compressions it's just ridiculous so it's really up to you what type of sand compression you want to use now the one i frequently use right here is the one where we use the sand as a one push or the way we just use a glass as the one push. They're pretty much the same, but the only reason that I use this one here a little bit more is because we have one line of sand going in instead of two, where it only uses one line of the entire side. So I just kind of prefer this way right here. It also looks nice and it works out perfectly as you can see right there. So as you can probably understand, there's lots of things right here that comes into place from building a cannon. Now I could go ahead and show you guys how you can build a cannon. I could build a cannon right in front of you, but it wouldn't really make a difference if it'd just be you copying me. Now what I want you to do is that I want you to sit down. I want you to go ahead and take in all of this information that I gave you to you and just start building your own cannons. Now you're not really going to see a difference in how you see cannons unless you start building with it you need to start building and just learn from your mistakes and take in some of the questions and tips and tricks that i had about 15 long about 10 full repeaters and about this three ticks after the hammer there's not really much more into it like you got to start from the bottom before you can go higher and just all about building your own cannon and just get it to work but of course it doesn't really help that you guys have a few tricks in your sleeve when you're building cannons and that's definitely why i've shown you this that it's 15 long so you know when you're doing something from a bottom which is probably a little bit over here you know that when this does a button right here it will not go longer than 15 blocks so you need to get a repeater going like this so in general it's just about building your own canning like finding your own setup as you can see right here this right here works out pretty well as and, and it's just about finding your own way to do things. Now, I could, as I said earlier, pretty much sit here and build this cannon here for you, but it would just be a simple copy and paste. I would rather want you guys to start building your own cannon. So if you have any issues on the way, please don't feel afraid to message me. I would love to get on and kind of try to explain in depth on how everything works. Now, I get lots of these messages all the time that people don't really understand how cannons works and how you wire it up. But as you can see right here, it's actually pretty simple. As long as you know that a piece of TNT blows up after 10 full repeaters, it's pretty easy to wire up the pistons. Now the timer itself, as I already said, is going to be three ticks after the power. And that's just a rule. Unless you use something else, you are really not gonna need any of this. So just make sure that you have all of this right here on three ticks. Now to compensate, if you're making a fusion, of course, you're going to need to have these two ticks right here of course on the other side so it matches this now fusioning is something when everything goes out of one block and the way we can do that is that we can go ahead and split things up so what we're going to do here is that this side right here which will blow up first is going to shoot let me go there the slap boss which is located right here as well as the sand coming in right here now that is going to shoot that into the wall so let's go ahead and paste that right there so that's where the sand and slap boss is going to land now the next shot includes the hammer, the scatter and the red sand, but that will not come in before two takes after. So whenever the hammer is blowing, blow, uh, getting shot to the wall, the sand right here would have dipped one block. And now the TNT will go on top, or the hammer sorry, and it will stack everything down. And that means that you can shoot everything through one hole because the hammer alone goes in and also the sand and slap boss goes in alone. So that's pretty much how that works. Now one thing I might be able to help you though, is that if you're having issues with your cannon, it's most likely something tick related. Now keep in mind that this right here is a fusion, so this will have a separate tick creator right here as you see here and over here, but it should be going on at the same time. The way you can do that and check it is by simply just counting ticks. Now I can use a blaze rod right here, this over here has a pocket that allows me to, but let's go ahead and count the ticks. So we have go ahead and count off these ticks, nine, 
and this right here will give 12 and that is this side right there from this side to the hammer now let's go ahead and take the last one over here and we can go ahead and check this out right here and quickly count this and this right here should give 12 as well if this both sides are not the same amount of ticks it is not going to fully stack so make sure that you check all the ticks the same with over here right here we should have 40 ticks because we have 10 full repeaters going in that gives a total of 40 now again if you want your hammer to go into the second power then we need 42 takes on this piston right here that controls the hammer so let's go ahead and have a look go ahead and quickly count these right here you can do it in your head as well every single repeater is four ticks so right here we have 43 that we need right here so let's go ahead and quickly check out here we have 43 now this right here will work perfectly because it's it's within this range right here. We, I'm pretty sure we could even delay this by even one more if we wanted to. So it's exactly on 40 ticks that it goes out. So it's just important that you count your ticks. If you know that this boost or, or sorry this power here will go off 10 full repeaters or 40 ticks after, then you know where the piston goes. You know where everything else goes. And it's just basic, just try your way forward and just keep trying to build your own cannons. But I think that'll be pretty much it guys. Hopefully you guys got a good understanding on how you build your own cannon. Now if you are still a little bit worried about how you build your own cannons, please message me down below. Throw me a comment on how I can explain it to you guys. Since it's really hard for me to try to explain something that I already know. So I'm just thinking, well how would I be able to explain something that I just pretty much learned from the experience. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember to comment, like and subscribe to my channel. My name is Sexer, and I'm out.